Why did I have a stroke? While some of you may know the answer to this question, for those of you who don't, today we're going to cover the primary reasons someone has a stroke and what happens in the brain during a stroke. Let's get into it. Genetics. There are certain genetic issues that can be passed down in families that may increase the risk of someone having a stroke. For example, if someone is diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos type 4 or sickle cell disease, this can put them in that higher stroke risk category. Um, but if you are interested in reading more, I've linked an article from the American Stroke Association that really goes into great depth on genetics, stroke risk factors, and prevention. And I've got that link down in the description below. Now, genetic issues are things that can't be changed, right? But the good news is that by consulting your doctor, staying on appropriate medications, and modifying lifestyle factors that could impact stroke risk, is that you can still reduce your risk of having another stroke or having one to begin with. Lifestyle. Now you likely already know about a lot of these factors. These are things that can be changed to help reduce your risk. Lifestyle factors that increase the risk of stroke are smoking, significant alcohol intake, chronic or uncontrolled high blood pressure, cholesterol or blood sugar, chronic stress, sleep problems, being overweight or obese, a diet lacking in nutritious foods, and a sedentary lifestyle. If you had a stroke due to one or more of these lifestyle factors, first of all, know that you're not alone. And know that there is actually a lot that you can do to help reduce your future risk. This can be through incorporating a better diet, more physical activity, stopping smoking, or taking your medications to better control your health issues. Congenital issues. These are issues that develop while baby is still in the womb. And while there are several different congenital issues that can increase stroke risk, the most common ones include AVM, or arteriovenous malformation, aneurysm, moya moya disease, and an unclosed patent foramen ovale, or PFO. Per the Mayo Clinic, an AVM is, quote, a tangle of blood vessels that irregularly connects arteries and veins, disrupting blood flow and oxygen circulation. And this can cause weakness in those blood vessels, which over time can lead to a rupture or a brain hemorrhage. An aneurysm is when there is a weak spot in the artery, which can lead to ballooning or widening. And if that aneurysm bursts, this can lead to a hemorrhagic stroke or a brain bleed. Moya Moya disease is rare, but it's caused by a blockage or narrowing of the carotid artery in the skull, which limits blood flow to the brain. And as a result, more tiny blood vessels form in an attempt to transport more blood. It's often seen in children and typically results in multiple mini strokes over time. And lastly, an unclosed PFO. When we're in the womb, we all start out with an open PFO, which is essentially a hole in our heart connecting the two atriums. And it exists because it allows blood to bypass the lungs, which don't really start working until they're exposed to air. So once a baby is born and they start using their lungs, the PFO closes within the first few months of life in around 75% of babies. And for the 25% of babies without a closed PFO, it usually doesn't become a problem unless a clot is passed through this hole and travels to the brain, thus causing a stroke. No cause. Unfortunately, even with all the advances of modern medicine, Doctors still can't sometimes pinpoint why a stroke happened. Sometimes perfectly healthy people have a stroke for no known reason, and the not knowing why can be scary. It's hard to treat the underlying cause of something if you don't know what it is. However, rest assured that your doctor, your neurologist, your medical team understands risk factors. They understand and should guide you on what medications will be appropriate and give you the information you need to move forward while reducing your future risk. What is a stroke? Now that you know the primary causes of stroke, it's also important to understand what a stroke is. That understanding can help you to advocate for yourself with your medical team. So at its core, a stroke is when a part of the brain is without oxygen for some period of time, and that leads to brain cell damage or death. 
Now there are two primary types of stroke, ischemic and hemorrhagic. An ischemic stroke is when a blood clot tr either travels from within the body to the brain or from somewhere within the brain and becomes lodged in a brain blood vessel, thus starving a part of the brain of blood, which means oxygen and nutrients are limited. Now, a hemorrhagic stroke is when a blood vessel bursts or ruptures within the brain or some of the brain structures. And this can also lead to the brain being starved of oxygen. Strokes can happen in different parts of the brain depending on which blood vessel was affected. And this is why we see stroke survivors look so different. It's why no two stroke survivors are exactly the same. Each part of our brain is responsible for different things. So for example, someone who has a stroke in the left parietal lobe will likely experience some speech issues while someone who has a right-sided motor cortex stroke um, will see limited movement on the left side. I hope that having a better understanding of what causes a stroke and how strokes can happen can help you have more open, informed conversations with your medical team. And that it will also help bring a sense of control back to your life, which may have been upended after your stroke. All right, everyone, that's it for today. If you feel comfortable sharing, leave a comment down below. What was your experience like finding out what caused your stroke? Or were you able to find the cause? And as always, I'm gonna be leaving a link down in the description below if you'd like to sign up for the email list, which gets you free stroke recovery tips and motivational emails every week, as well as a free copy of my ebook, The Stroke Recovery Pocket Guide. And if you find value in what we do here at Post Stroke and you're able, please consider gifting us, either by clicking the YouTube bar below and giving us a super thanks, by a one-time donation via PayPal, or by becoming a Patreon member, where in exchange for a monthly donation, you get access to cool perks like social media shoutouts, behind the scenes footage, and even YouTube shoutouts, of which I have one today. Thank you again so much, Heather G, for continuing to contribute at the Empower level. We can't do what we do without you. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.